Let's imagine you have a big fight coming up and you want to make sure you win. Perhaps the last thing you'd think about is summoning a demon or some kind of spirit to get your victory. Or perhaps you want to ensure a certain person you're attracted to feels the same way about you. Would you consider using magic to guarantee their devotion? The answer is very likely no, for the fight and for the attraction. But some people have tried this and their term for the summoning is usually called an evocation. Such practices were of course more in vogue in the past, but there are still people that dabble in the dark arts today. Let's now see how it's done. We'll start with the summoning a demon you might very well have heard of because you watched the movie Hereditary. The demon is called Paimon, and since he has endless knowledge, getting him on your side could work out well for you. The thing is, as you might have seen in that movie, a few sacrifices might have to be made. The experts, by the way, said the movie was over the top and Paimon would never expect headless humans as sacrifices. Sacrifice. He's not that hardcore, and maybe a bit of blood will suffice. So one way to get down with Paimon, or at least try, is to draw a large circle on the ground. It will be big enough for you, the spellcaster, to stand in, as well as the demon if he should choose to show up. You'll then place candles in the cardinal directions, meaning north, south, east, and west. These represent the demon Belial to the north, Lucifer to the east, Flurius to the south, and Leviathan to the west. These guys represent all the elements of earth, air, fire, and water. Once you've got this all set up, you'll then try and evoke the main man, Satan, to put all the elements in a state of pure balance. Here's the prayer you can use to summon Satan. Lord Satan, by your grace, grant me, I pray, the power to conceive in my mind and to execute that which I desire to do, the end which I would attain by thy help, O mighty Satan, the one true God who livest and reignest forever and ever. I entreat thee to inspire Paimon to manifest before me, that they may give me true and faithful answer, so that I may accomplish my desired end, provided that it is proper for his or her office. This I respectfully and humbly ask in your name, Lord Satan, may you deem me worthy, Father. After this, you can then summon Paimon. You could do this in a group, which might be a little less scary. Just get your friends together and join hands around the circle. You can try summoning Paimon and he may communicate with someone in that circle. Apparently, if he does attempt to communicate, the noise will be too much for that person whose head he has entered, so you can request that he lower the volume. He is said to have a very loud voice and also comes down to earth with crashing cymbals. If he doesn't come, there's also the option to prick your finger a little bit and drop some some blood into the flames of the candles, because hey, demons often like a bit of sacrifice. You might think this is all very outlandish and hasn't been done before, but that's not true. You can find ways to summon demons like Paimon in a series of old magical books called the Grimoires. One expert on these books said Paimon is a particularly hard demon to summon only because he's one of four kings of hell. He talks about navigating the bureaucracies of hell, meaning to get Paimon you might have to go through lesser demons first. But there are are lots of demons you can try and summon, and there's no reason to just go for Paimon. We looked at other ways to get your demon into your world and found that some people will start by drawing a pentagram on the floor. After that, get yourself five candles of the same color and a color you think is befitting for your demon of choice. Place each candle at every point in the pentagram. These points represent earth, air, water, fire, and spirit. You'll then have to print out the sigil of your demon. If you don't know what that is, it's kind of like the pictorial signature of your demon. It's your demon's symbol, a demonic icon. You'll have to memorize this sigil so you can bring it into your thoughts when you choose to do so. As you stand in that pentagram, you'll have this sigil in your mind when you read out aloud the prayer we told you about earlier. If something does make contact with you, it's important to show the utmost respect. For example, if you're summoning Paimon, make sure to call him King Paimon. You should also get to know them. And not just start making demands. We actually found someone online that said she'd been in contact with Paimon a few times, and she said he was polite and harmless. She said she asked him a lot of things, including this. One of the first things I asked King Paimon for was to convince my dad to let me build my home on his land, because if I have to pay for land on top of the house building costs, it'll take 20 years and I don't have time for that. She used the pentagram, the candles, the sigil, and the prayer. You could use this same method to summon a demon called Andromalius. For those who work in dark circles, this demon can offer protection from someone who wishes to do them harm. It's also said he can return things to you that have been stolen. One woman we found online 
online made a small doll of the person that had done something bad and filled it with really disgusting things. It seems more people summon demons than we generally assume, and one forum we found had a thread dedicated to summoning Andromalius. One person wrote that he had done this and the demon had come, adding, he sorted out a major issue for me in under a month. This is how he did it. He got the sigil of the demon as well as red candles and an indigo candle. He also put together some raw eggs, some rose wine, some blood, some cakes, and some fresh strawberries. He then wrote out what he wanted from the demon and made sure he had some photos of the person that had done wrong to him. He put those photos under the candles. When all that was in order, after midnight each night he would chant the Andromalius N, which is kind of a prayer but in a language we couldn't understand. You can find this N on YouTube. It goes something like this, Tasa Fubin Andromalius Onkar. You have to keep repeating that and all the time have this sigil in your mind. You can even print out the sigil and uh, drop a bit of blood on it. When he comes, you'll likely hear some hissing and he usually arrives with a snake. You can then tell him again what it is you want, which in this case will usually be protection or to get something stolen from you back. Another person we found did this to get back at someone who had done bad to them, but they had carved the name of that person into the candles. They also rolled the candles in castor oil and then covered them in black pepper and basil. Some people, well, some men, might want to summon a female demon. What we're talking about is a succubus, the female demon that gets into a man's head at night and makes love to them. Can one of these actually be summoned? Apparently, to get her to come visit you, first you have to set the mood, which means planting around the bedroom a few candles and incense sticks. One person then did this. He got himself some white chalk, with which he said he drew a circle on the floor, although a pentagram would have done. That circle must remain clear of clutter and you can't even let it get a bit dusty. He then laid crushed herbs around the circle for what he called protection. On the inside of the circle, at even distances, he put down five black candles and at the same points but on the outside of the circle, he placed five sigils. When he was ready and the candles were lit, he laid in the circle with his arms and legs spread out in the shape of a pentagram. He then imagined the succubus coming. One person imagined his succubus to be a woman he actually knew and then chanted this prayer. O Lilith, send your servant after me only for good reasons and not to harm thee. I call to be with my desire, my own passion to fill my dire heart. I imagine the woman I want and therefore she shall be a succubi. According to that person, this can get you the woman of your dreams. For women, if they want a man, they can summon an incubus. We're told that this relationship should be formed slowly because these are powerful demons. Perhaps on the first night just get to know each other rather than jump right in. If you want to see what the demon looks like, we are told you can use a black mirror to do something called scry. Scrying is sometimes called seeing into the future, but in this case, it's just to get a glimpse of who you're talking to. You place the black mirror in front of you and put lit candles in the middle, and then you look at the mirror through the flame. Some people say that the candle you use should be inscribed with the qualities of the person you're looking for. You have to know what exactly you want, and that way, you'll get the demon you want. In all, it seems there are plenty of ways to summon a demon and mostly they include knowing the demon and getting his sigil, getting the right candles, maybe offering some blood, and setting the scene. We should say that some people don't believe in drawing circles or pentagrams. You should also either use the demon prayer or try to find the demon's end. Know what you want to ask and always be polite. But there are other ways people have tried to summon demons and we're sure some of you might have used a Ouija board at some point in your life. Kids have also tried playing a summoning game called the Charlie Charlie Challenge, which involves trying to summon a demon using pencils and paper. They ask, are you there? And if the pencil hits the yes on the paper, then the evocation has succeeded. We might add that for people who take their summoning seriously, such basic evocations might be a little insulting. You've just listened to a show of what you might consider absolute nonsense, but you might also believe it's possible to summon a demon. If you think it's nonsense, please tell us why in the comments. If you think it's possible, tell us why you think that. Also, be sure to check out our other episode, The Zozo Demon, What You Should Know Before Using a Ouija Board. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.